It's 12.05 in the afternoon on this Wednesday. Good afternoon. Welcome on into Helping Seniors of Brevard. I'm John Harper. Let's get things underway as I introduce the Executive Director of Helping Seniors of Brevard and the host of our radio show every Wednesday as well. Here is none other than Carrie Fink. Hey, John Harper. Thank you. It's uh, always pleasant to be here. Lunchtime, Wednesdays, 12 noon, 90.3 FM, WEJF. And in the studio today is longtime friend of the Helping Seniors Organization. And I would say longtime friend to seniors and everybody in Brevard County, too. That would be none other than Jennifer Barton with Seniors Helping Seniors. How are you? Uh, it's wonderful. It's good to be here, Carrie. You know, I saw something on Facebook, and it was talking about how the week between Christmas and New Year's is like that week where you can't remember if it's Monday. That's true. <laughs> it's, like... it's true. My friend just texted me that, and she said, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's Wednesday, but it feels like Tuesday, but yet, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but you can set your calendar by 12 noon Wednesdays on 90.3 FM WEJF because it is the Helping Seniors Radio Show. And on behalf of Joe Steckler, our president and founder, Nancy Deardorff, our operations director and our whole team uh, welcome to the radio and for those of you that might be catching this later uh, either as a podcast or maybe you're listening online at uh, wejf.net we welcome you to the conversation and so let's begin we just all got through uh, hopefully for you uh, I know for me it was a good uh, Christmas weekend because it was grandbaby filled <laughs> so it was like baby's <laughs> grandbaby's first first Christmas so it Aww. was um it was just, you know, off the chart. Everything the grandbaby does is cute and all that stuff. And, you know, at that age, it's not about the child. The child is just reacting to everybody smiling and having a big time. But it's really about, every, you know, everybody else because they're just having fun with the grandbaby. How was your Christmas? It was wonderful. All the family came over to my house. So, it, you know, it's a lot of work. But it's a lot of fun. Love having everybody over and, and seeing everybody open presents and, and eating together and <laughs> We like to adopt people too, so always having friends in too is you know, it's a wonderful, wonderful day. You know, I was talking with Nancy Deardorff, and she said sort of the same happened to her. You know, because they had a bunch of uh, folks come in. They've always done a historical like uh, Christmas Eve party. She said that it's sort of like first they were just going to have a quiet Christmas Eve, and then it turned out with all that, which is really what the fun and, and the spirit of Christmas is about. But one of the things that I have to comment on was one of your Facebook posts because you got uh, this thing. I remember. Remember we talked about it last Christmas, and apparently it still keeps going about these pajamas. You want to oh, share my about goodness. that? So this is this is a tradition in my family, and, and see, here's where you're never too old for family traditions. <laughs> when we were little kids, my sister and I would get new pajamas every Christmas uh-huh. Eve. Um, Santa would bring them, and we would take pictures in our new pajamas in front of the fireplace every Christmas Eve. And that has not stopped. Here we I'm, How old am I? Um <laughs> And we, we still do this. Yeah. So it became a thing a number of years ago. Um, my sister has a, a penchant for animal print, uh-huh. which I do not. <laughs> so um, I, I tried to combat the animal print with something, different pajamas that would be, you know, what is polar opposite of animal print? And somehow it lend, ended up on llamas. So I, I found Fala La La Llama pajamas <laughs> and she hated them. So that was the exact you know thing I was going for. So ever since then, we've had this battle between the animal print pajamas and the llama pajamas. And this year, a friend, uh, Sean Phelan, he, he found a onesie, a llama <laughs> pajama onesie that actually lit up. It had a battery pack in it and it, it lit up. So I was, I, I totally won Christmas pajama war this year. And my, right. my sister literally screamed as she walked in the door, I came around the corner and, and she screamed. It was the best reaction ever. So I don't know if I'll be able to top that ever again. <laughs> you know, uh, I think that's one of the fun, that's one of the fun things. We've always been into the, uh, the ugly Christmas sweater, but now you guys are taking to a whole level with the pajama, ugly pajama Christmas, wars. Christmas pajama wars. And it's just a silly little thing, but the whole family gets into it and laughs and we have a good time with it. It's all in good fun. Uh, but it's just some, you know, a silly tradition tradition that that started years and years and years ago and it's it's just you know one of those little things that that um we'll we'll all talk about for a couple more weeks and then probably November I'll start you know gearing up for the next year's pajama war Uh aha 
Carrie and uh, Jennifer, don't forget uh, the gift that keeps on giving, and that is a fruitcake. <laughs> <laughs> Can't forget that. I happen to like fruitcakes, but a lot of people... So don't. everybody, you know, it's kind of like when you watch the end of Miracle on 34th Street, and they say, what do we do with all those Santa Claus letters? Send them down to the courthouse. Maybe now we know what to do with all those fruitcakes, Jennifer. There you go. <laughs> we we, <laughs> we sent them to the John, John Harper. <laughs> <laughs> I and love that, it. And, and by the way, that's the judge. Uh, did you ever notice that? A little trivia question. That's the name of the judge on Miracle on 34th Street. Yeah? In that final courtroom scene where uh-huh. where he says uh, uh, the Santa Claus was real. Yeah. Uh, that's the judge's name, John Harper. I did not know you that. Look for that next year when that, the movie comes out. Wow. Now I have so to pay more attention. We have to ask John for his autograph after the show then. <laughs> <laughs> ah, it's good to know. Maybe that's why he likes fruitcakes. Uh, there you go. It all it all works. You know, I, I <laughs> anyway, we're having fun with Christmas, but we're also going to talk about New Year because, you know, as we get to the end of the year, uh, I don't know why we do this, but we all like to take stock of like what we got accomplished. Did we get our little checklist done? What are the things that we feel like we can do better? I think that's why January always becomes health and fitness month is because we just had such a great time at Christmas. And then we say, well, we got to have to do better next year. But one of the things, Jennifer, that I wanted us to try to talk about today um, on the Helping Seniors radio show was kind of like New Year's resolutions because we've been on a bandwagon all year long. Well, actually, to be honest, Joe Steckler, our president and founder, ever since I met him, Uh, And now we're going into 12th year of helping seniors. He's always talked about the need to create an aging plan. In other words, like plan ahead, just like we make hurricane plans. Doesn't mean we want a hurricane, but we're going to plan ahead for the things we might run into as we get older. And there's some real solid pieces of advice that we've run across uh, all through the year from everybody from elder law attorneys to financial planners to folks who go into to to help seniors at home like your company. You've, You've shared a lot of tips and ideas. So there's a lot of, there's this great bunch of information out of there, but it's kind of like if we don't put it to work, we never get any place with it. So we came up with the theme for helping seniors of last year, which we're going to continue into the new year. We, we call it getting your ducks in a row, which is kind of a fun way of saying the same thing, like let's do your aging plan. But Jennifer, as we've gone along, we've also talked about that we keep learning. You don't have to do this on your own. In fact, it's probably detrimental to try to do this on your own because we live we're blessed to live in a county that has so many good resources for seniors you guys are absolutely one of those certainly at the top of the list just in case somebody's new to this talk for a minute about seniors helping seniors because you're a great resource to help seniors at home but you're also a great employer of seniors too well thank you yes so uh, my company is seniors helping seniors and we really do hire seniors to go out and help other seniors at home we do all the fun things like um, transportation to and from doctor's appointments, grocery store out socially, uh, meal preparation, light housekeeping, medication reminders. We do uh, a lot of things that, um, you know, seniors need to stay at home, you mm-hmm. know, and, and help them stay independent. We work with a lot of folks that are have mild to moderate dementia, mm-hmm. memory loss, um, and we help them along that the, their memory journey. We try to do things to help keep them as independent as possible for as long as possible, uh, help family members, give them a little bit of respite. So we um, really do hire the seniors to go out and help them do that, which we find really makes a big difference because mm-hmm. it's someone more like a friend coming in to help it's not we're not there to take over we're not there to tell them what to do we're, we're there to kind of come alongside right. and do things the way that they've done them for the last you know 50 60 years we're going to do it the same exact way so because we understand yeah <laughs> well so, I, no, I was going to say I remember Joe talking about he Joe always talks about in an aging plan he has this thing that he talks about what he calls elements of care which is like you know you have to map this out because life expectancy these days is pretty long. So when they say you can start collecting Social Security, you know, as early as age 62 for some folks, you know, you're going to be thinking about like what the next 30, 35 years looks like. And so Joe talks about this thing that he calls elements of care, meaning you get the right help that you need at the right part of your aging journey, you know, and you would make an assumption that you might need more help later on than you would need today. And so he's always been a big advocate of calling folks like what you do with Seniors Helping Seniors because A, it gets uh, the seniors used to having 
some extra help at home, so then they're less resistant as things go along if they need some more help. It's also kind of reassuring because it ups the safety factor and all that, but probably the third point, as Joe would often talk about, is it conserves your resources because it's not an expensive type of help compared to what you might run into you know if you need a lot of help down the road right right we're less expensive and we have we have a, a smaller minimum requirement than most hands-on you know companies do so that that is helpful to kind of keep that pot of money right. going a little bit longer and a lot of times we are actually able to help someone for for years just right. doing the homemaker companion type services that we do but because that of that because like you said a lot of times we are the first ones in mm -hmm. So we're talking to the seniors, we're talking to the family, and which is great. They're, they're having us in, so that's a good thing. It's the start of the plan, right. but they haven't planned. They're, we're the first one in, so it's, hey, have you done paperwork? Have you done power of attorney? Have you thought about this? Right. So we're, we're, we see the need because we are often, the first time they've had help in the home, there are so many pieces of the puzzle that need to be put into place, you know, not for just for today, but for five years down the road, right. for 10 years down the road, we see that. So we're, we're a big advocate for getting your ducks in a row. <laughs> well, not only that, and then and then be, uh, probably because of that, you've also faithfully served on the uh, Helping Seniors Volunteer Board of Directors, I mean, for really uh, almost since Joe started the whole thing. And I think that's why it's so important to get information in the hands of people that they can make good decisions with. Because I remember us doing radio shows in the height of COVID and we would talk back and forth that, you know, a lot of times it's the adult children of the parents, you know, maybe they live in the Midwest or up North and they would come down and check on mom, you know, every other month or once a quarter and then when COVID hit, nobody was going anywhere. So they were really depending on you. And I think that happens a lot of times too, is that you're that link back to everybody else in the family that kind of keeps an eye on what's going on with mom or dad or aunt or uncle, but also keeping the family up to speed. Like, here's where we are. We might need to look at something at a next level or everything's fine and let's just keep rocking. Yeah, absolutely. Um, many times we're counseling with the kids just mm -hmm. as much as we are with, with the senior themselves. In fact, so over Christmas, you know, gosh, it was cold all of a sudden. <laughs> oh, Holy cow. Wow. So they, uh, moved, they moved the North Pole down to Florida. They is what surely I got. did. <laughs> they surely did. So Christmas morning, um, I got a call from a daughter up in New York saying, oh, my gosh, my dad's heat is not on. Oh. And he is cold. So, of course, we had the, the caregiver run right over right. and make sure that you know, the, the heat was working, what's going on, what, what can we do to right. resolve this? Um, and unfortunately, the very next day, um, the gentleman was having an emergency and having difficulty wow. uh, talking to emergency management. So again, thank goodness we, you know, we, we try to keep people within a five to 10 mile radius of where they, where they live. So right. he was able to go back, run right back over and um, kind of communicate and say, yeah, this, this is, this is an issue. Um, and make sure that the gentleman got the help that he needed in a timely manner. So it's yeah. a lot of times, you know, we hope that never happens. We, you know, we don't uh, often have to go last minute running over to someone's house. But if we do, um, you know, that's why we're there is to be able to provide the services and also the communication back to the daughter in New York that, hey, this is what's happening. This is what's going on. Um, yeah. it, it's okay. Yeah, well, and you know, and that is part of like we talk about uh, as we talk about making those New Year's resolutions, you know, making a good aging plan or getting your ducks in a row, all those things that we talk about really should be part of that. But you're, you know, uh, one of the things that you mentioned is uh, we were talking before the show that you had given out actually a little gift to the folks in your office. And you said, I think this is going to be part of our plan for next year because um, I wanted to give them and talk about that. You said I wanted to give them a journal so that that they could keep up with some of the things going forward. Well, absolutely. You know, we're, we're, so we're always taking care of other people. Right. Um, and I'm, I'm extremely guilty of this. I take care of everybody else. I take care of my family. I take care yeah. of yep. um, my girls at work. I take care of our customers. And I'm not really great about self-care. I don't yep. necessarily yep. stop and take time to do what I need to do for me. Yeah. And, you know, that's very true of a lot of family caregivers. Mm -hmm. 
where they're, they're so busy working and taking care of kids, but then taking care of mom and dad, and they're taking care of everybody. And I'm always preaching to them that they need to practice self-care. They have to take right. care of themselves before they can take care of somebody else. So I thought, I really need to practice what I preach. Right. <laughs> so I found a really wonderful journal, of course, Amazon.com, yep. <laughs> uh, that does a little bit of everything. It's a food uh, and an exercise journal, but it's a lot more than that. It, it, it's got some... Um, for me, prayer intentions for the day, but it's also got some, you know, affirmations and a, a really well-rounded mind, body, spirit yeah. kind of journal to kind of help me keep that in the forefront of my mind of taking care of myself so that I can take care of others. And I, I went over it with the, the ladies in the office and they really liked that idea yeah. as well. So we're all going to do it together because, of course, if you do it with someone else, we'll, we'll encourage each other and keep each other honest. Right, right. Keep each other doing it. So um, really loving this idea. The more and more I got thinking about it, um, my sister has rheumatoid arthritis. Mm. It's uh, a lifelong condition and, and it's not nice to yeah. you know <laughs> put it mildly so it's something that i'm really encouraging her to do as well because as you know if anybody that has a condition where you're unfortunately going to doctors mm -hmm. often and and you know how many seniors do we have that are going to doctors yeah. often you get there and you say they they ask you how are you feeling great I'm doing yeah. great because right now you are <laughs> yeah i, I feel yeah. great today but two weeks ago you were feeling horrible so I love the idea of having this journal and they have one specific to arthritis, specific to other wow. conditions, uh, medically based, uh, anti-inflammatory, you name it. They, they have one for those specific conditions. And I love the idea of having that journal and taking it with you. All your medications are listed and you can go back and say, yeah, right now I feel great. But boy, two weeks ago, I went through four or five days where I was feeling terrible. And these are the symptoms because yeah. we forget. Yeah. Well, we're talking with Jennifer Barton with Seniors Helping Seniors, and I was thinking as you were talking about that, you know, what typically happens when you, if you jot that stuff down, I just remember, you know, taking taking my mom to the doctor, and, you know, the doctor, well, how are you? Oh, everything's great. <laughs> I'm like, I'm well, fine. that's not what you were saying in the car <laughs> on the way over. Exactly. Do you want to share a little more here? <laughs> and, you know, there is a thing that, you know, uh, I don't know why we do it, but we get to the doctor and you know, maybe it's because we got dressed up and we're, you know, maybe we're feeling a little better about things, but, you, but it's not helping the doctor and it's certainly not helping us if we aren't communicating correctly about where we are on things. And that's what I think you're speaking to. Exactly, exactly. And in that whole line of getting your ducks in a row, it's you know, kind of taking charge of what you need to take charge of right. and, and taking charge of your medical yeah. and, and your health is, is, part and parcel to all of that so i love this idea of having that journal taking yeah. it with you and and making sure that you are communicating correctly with the doctor and and getting across all of that information that you need to so that you're being treated correctly well and not only that right you're you're able to to kind of journal like i know you guys i think you still offer um this program called the electronic caregiver right yes B because part of what i saw on the value and it's like I, to, I don't mean to dumb it down. It, it acts as a help I've fallen and I can't get up kind of thing, but it does has the capability of doing way so much more. But one of the things is it helps you track what's going on with you. You know, if you take some of the, uh, as I remember, some of the uh, uh, capabilities allow you to even track certain semi-medical things that might be of benefit to your doctor. So, you know, like if you're recording your blood pressure in that journal or different things, you say, wow, you know, I felt really bad after breakfast. And, you you know, you, you may get some clues if you go back and read your journal. Right. And with the electronic caregiver, it actually Bluetooths up to the cloud. Wow. Uh, so it's not a written pencil and paper thing it's actually bluetooth thing and it will go where you want it to go so if it's going directly to the doctor's office or maybe it's going directly to a family member that's got medical background right um it it tracks that so that yes they can see the doctor can look and see trends if we're trending a little bit high blood pressure or maybe it's a little bit low and maybe we need to do some medication changes or lifestyle changes yeah so for sure i would say uh that uh, as we're talking about these, we're, we're really going to dive into uh, these New Year's re resolutions. And we're going to talk about, you know, kind of this year, we kind of broke it into seven main areas, not because there's probably 
we could arguably come up with more, but we just trying to try to come up with an idea to kind of keep it manageable. And so I think the, the first place, like what we've talked about in the first half of the show here is just the wisdom of making a step and saying, I am going to do something different next year. I am going to get my ducks in a row. I am going to put this together in the second half of the show. I'd like for us to just take a quick jaunt through what I call those big seven areas. And we'll kind of focus on that. But for the moment, Jennifer Barton, as we're talking about um, the work that you do, bo- both in terms of providing help to families in their homes with the companion care, but also that you are a great employer for people who, I love how you said it one time, you said, we, we look for the heart of a volunteer that doesn't mind accepting a paycheck. And you really have so much to offer. If people want to talk to you about that or electronic caregiver or any of the things that you guys have at Seniors Helping Seniors, how do they get in touch with you? So we can be reached uh, by phone at 321-722-2999. Again, that's 321-722-2999. Of course, we're online, seniorshelpingseniors.com forward slash Brevard. And we're on Facebook, LinkedIn, and all those good places too. Yeah, did you post the llama pajamas on that or just on your just on my personal page um because okay. it was a make bliss selfie in in llama pajamas so i didn't you know <laughs> i was pretty brave that i put it out on facebook anyway but <laughs> it's all it's all good so we're talking with jennifer barton with seniors helping seniors on the second half of the show we're going to dig a little deeper into those um seven areas that we would suggest maybe you might even grab a notepad and just jot these down lots of good resources you can find at helping seniors of brevard.org uh and also before we get to the half show break let me leave our phone number in case you know we helped over five thousand people last year uh, is what is with the numbers that nancy was telling us on calls on the senior info helpline 321-473-7770 and it's a great number to keep by the phone so that whatever you're running into uh we're here to try to help you as a florida nonprofit. that's the reason we exist to uh we do that as kind of we call it the inbound calls and then the outbound we try to do is what we're doing now is share information and education so with that we'll uh we'll we'll look forward to uh seeing you on the second half of the helping seniors radio show every wednesday right here on 90.3 fm wejf see you in a few moments it's uh, 12 32 right here on 90.3 fm you're listening to Helping Seniors of Brevard. And let's get the second half of our show underway. Here's the Executive Director of Helping Seniors of Brevard and the host of the show every Wednesday, none other than Carrie Fink. Oh, thank you, John Harper. And uh, good to be back on the radio every Wednesday, 12 noon, lunchtime, 90.3 FM, WEJF. And uh, welcome to those listening online, WEJF.net. And if you're catching this as a podcast later, well, Happy New Year, because <laughs> <laughs> that's happening this weekend, too. So uh, in the studio with us today, longtime friend of Helping Seniors, just a great friend of seniors in general, and just people in general, good people, uh, Jennifer Barton with Seniors Helping Seniors. Welcome back. Thank you, Carrie. It's good to be here, like I said. Yeah, so we were talking about that. Actually, uh, our second annual Helping Seniors Cruise is setting sail Uh, January 6th and it is actually sold out in fact we were talking during the break apparently it's oversold uh, which is a nice thing to happen this is a um, this is an idea that Joe Steckler our president founder had talked about since the day almost since the day that uh, helping seniors got started because Joe is real big about seniors having socialization and so travel is a great thing you know you go out you meet new people you get you become friends they fly back to i don't know washington state and now you're sharing pictures of kids and grandkids over facebook and that's fun but joe's point was what if there was a group of people who would want to travel together here in brevard county so that when they got back from the trip they're like hey let's have lunch next wednesday and things like that so it really kind of helps us build a senior community and so we were very fortunate just before the timing wasn't great, but we were very fortunate to meet Chris Morse, who, uh, together with his wife, Betty, they have a company where they have been not only travel agents, as Chris says, he's been in the travel business since 1982, or his euphemism is since dinosaurs roamed the earth. <laughs> and then on top of that, uh, they are special needs certified. So one of the things they really enjoy is helping people who are not sure 
if they can travel or they th- they think their traveling days have passed them by, that they, they really relish an opportunity to try to help them get to travel and travel safely. And so one of the things that Chris came, he said, hey, I'd like to help you guys put together a fundraiser for helping seniors. If we could help fund, get this vision going for a foundation. And we could have people from Brevard travel together. And we said, that sounds great. And then COVID hit. And we had to shift that date for that first cruise literally five times. But we did get to go sailing October of last year, our first ever. We we sailed out of Port Canaveral with 50 folks who had a great time, many of whom are are back with us as we go sailing in January. So this is actually going to be the second annual um Helping Seniors Foundation Cruise. We're going to sail out on MSC Maravilla from Port Canaveral. Uh, like I said, the cruise is now sold out. It's actually oversold, uh, as, as we were talking about during the break. But the neat thing is, go ahead and jot this on your calendar now. I'm going to give you two dates. First, because I love how this all works together. Saturday, October 7th. You have a place to be. It's called the American Muscle Car Museum because... The seventh annual Helping Seniors Car Raffle. We're going to be talking about that very soon, but that's coming. And Mark Pylock, the very kind and gracious owner who is the sponsor of that great, great evening out at the museum, is going to uh, has invited us back for October seventh. So, Yay. so that's going to be coming. But literally, fun. literally, just a few days after that, on October twelfth, Chris Morris has arranged a three night cruise on yet another MSC ship called the MSC Seaside. So we're going, so we've been on Davina. That was our first one. We're going on Maravilla for the second one. And we're going on Seaside for the third one. So it'll be a three-night cruise, October 12th. Chris is working out some really, really excellent value pricing. <clears throat> the same goes for the 12th, uh, sorry, the 15th, because then it will go out for seven nights. So we're going to do the same thing we do this time. There'll be two sailings. The uh, the 12th is a three-night sailing. And then <clears throat> we come up on the um, 15th, and it'll be a seven-night sailing, where a lot of people will choose just to go for all 10. One of the people who's going for all 10 is going to be Lori. I'd like to teach the world to sing Hafer. And her and her husband are going to be there providing entertainment throughout. And if you were there when we had our little holiday festivities at Zahn, you know, Lori, I'd like to teach the world to sing Hafer, was part of a group called the Hillside Singers with the worldwide hit. The, the People call it the Coca-Cola song, but that was actually <laughs> the title, I'd like to teach the world to sing. So having toured the world with big bands, you know, Glenn Miller, Tommy Dorsey Orchestra, Les Brown, they're going to be providing entertainment for that. But the lesson learned from this one is you're going to want to book early. So we're going to have information about that very, very soon. It's not actually too early to call Chris and say, I want to be first on the list when you get that info together because you want to go ahead and book and deposit early because that's how you get all the great upgrades and things like that. So the place to get started with that is just give Nancy a call, 321-473-7770, and say, I'd like to be on that list so you guys can tell me as soon as you have all the details in but the dates are set so those three dates is october 7th and uh for the car raffle october 12th for the uh helping seniors uh second third annual foundation cruise or october 15th or come with us for both so with that kind of uh put aside let's jump back into the conversation we were having about new year's resolutions and we're talking about actually what i call the big seven that we learned in our put your ducks in a row kind of theme for last year and i was trying to count on my fingers can i remember them all (laughs) and i think i did you did on break so hopefully it's okay so so what they are is number one is all about um legal and then number two was all about financial. And then if you remember, we talked about, well, what if your goal is to live at home safely? Like, I like where I am. I want to age in place, but I want to make plans so I can do it safely. We said number four was, what if I'm open to maybe downsizing? I want to see what assisted living looks like. I want to see what my other living options are. So that would be the fourth area. The fifth area we talked about was medical and just medical, but not just having to go to a doctor, but it's also wellness and everything connected with that. Then the next area after that we talked about was Medicare, which really does become part of your uh, entire 
uh, both health history and financial history because making the correct decisions about how you approach Medicare can really impact both things, how well you're living health-wise, but also how well you're living financial wise so then on top of that we added transportation just so we'd have we could round everything out and get to the full seven so i think i said seven but jennifer barton with seniors helping seniors you really uh we were talking before the break that you really take time out when you're first sitting down with a family to kind of walk them through a couple of these steps just generically so that you know that they have paperwork that's going to help you serve them well Right, absolutely. And, you know, when it comes to some of the paperwork powers attorney and and different things, we might not really even need that ever. But because we're the first ones in and we know how important those things are, we always ask, you know, do you have a living will? Do you have power of attorney? Have you thought about those things? Uh, Because it's so important. And as we joked on break, I, I not only will talk to the senior, but I will turn to their kids as well and ask them if they have it right because you know, most a lot of times that the the kids are probably about my age you know we're yeah. we're in our 40s 50s 60s taking care of mom and dad right. who are in their 80s and 90s and it's really never too early right. to have all of that paperwork and have those ducks in a row so the the senior will always kind of get a kick at the fact that i look at <laughs> <laughs> the daughter or the son and say hey you need this too. You yeah. need to have power of attorney. You need to have some of these documents in place for yourself as well. Uh, but yeah, absolutely. We we try to fish all of that out during the assessment, which we go out and we do free. We don't ever charge for that. Um, so we can look at the house. Yeah. Um, you know, you, you need to think about grab bars, a ramp. You need to think about some safety features. If this is where you want to stay, what do you need to do to this house to make it safe you know, for not only for today, but for tomorrow, for five or 10 years from now. So it's a lot of things that you need to look at. And that's why having that plan Mm -hmm. and kind of going through those steps, as you just mentioned, is so important. You know, we spent a lot of time last year and we're going to again in 2023 uh, with a thing we call the Senior Resource Center of Brevard. And that is something that uh, Joe Steckler, together with Greg Kennedy, the executive director of Zon Beachside, they, they kind of came together and said, we need to have this vision. Uh, Greg, whose background, you know, he runs really, I think, one of the top assisted livings there, Beachside, Zon Beachside Assisted Living. And now this year, they're going to be opening up a really cool thing called the Residences at Zon. Beautiful. Yeah. So this is going to be like, you know, independent living, which means like I'm close to services, but I still want to be on my own. Plus, I have a great route if later on I say, okay, I need a little more help. I have assisted living. And, of course, they're also known uh, as experts in memory care. And I know that Greg, in particular, has gone way out of his way to incorporate technology, just like we were talking about you guys and the electronic caregiver. They really try to use the best technology to, to, to also help make sure we're looking after the safety of seniors. But But the point that I wanted to get back to is they had this idea of the Senior Resource Center as a place that people could get access to information and resources. And so as part of that, we started a lecture series called the Senior Resource Center of Brevard Community Info Series. So we're going to continue that actually in 2023. And what we did last year, and we'll do again this year, is take one month at a time to kind of look at each of these categories. So uh, let me go ahead and give you a date. Now we're moving them around the county a little bit We're going to be in some different locations to try to give everybody a chance to access this. So literally the next one is going to be on um, the last Monday in January, which I believe is the 30th, but it's the last Monday in January. And we're going to actually be meeting at a new location uh, in Melbourne, uh, Buena Vida Estates, and we're actually going to set up for the year. And then we're going to come back to that first rung about the uh, the legal paperwork and Jennifer like you were saying when you sit with family you know it's really interesting because we have some really top quality elder law attorneys that have uh, donated a lot of time and effort into the work of helping seniors I'm talking about uh, you know board certified elder law attorney Bill Johnson has been side by side with Joe since before there was a helping seniors he was helping Joe back in the days of Brevard Alzheimer's Uh, Foundation, And then folks like uh, the law office of Amy B. Van Fossen, who are 
just really excel at what they do. And then um, Ruth Rhodes of, of Rhodes Law, who is an expert elder law attorney, and she actually volunteers time on our Helping Seniors Board as well. So we have great resources within our Helping Seniors Network. And, you know, as I've heard every single one of them talk about, having that right paperwork is so important because the minute that you need it, you don't get a chance to redo it if there was a flaw. So they, I've heard every single one of them counsel against these online programs like, oh, just do this yourself. You know, it'll only cost you $100 and you'll have this you know, perfectly done document. And then when the emergency happens and you need that document, Jennifer, you find out it doesn't work and now you're really in 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 a deep barrel <laughs> exactly because every state law is a little bit different so yeah. you have to make sure that it's florida specific and what i like about an elder attorney is they've seen the mistakes and they've seen the different forms that yeah. that a simple form can take and so they know the ins and outs the intricacies of all of this so they they know how to protect you correctly yeah. so that you know they know how, what the loopholes are they know where the the pitfalls can be so they really can make sure that you are protected the way you want to be protected yeah and nancy deardorff our operations director has this saying like how do you know what you don't know and so so the problem that i keep hearing back from our our elder law attorney friends is that the this is really what the problem is you think you're covered you think you did this or maybe you didn't do it and now you're really in trouble anyway on account of that but a lot of times it's like that that a little knowledge could be a dangerous thing. You really, that's why we say don't try this on your own. But the same happens in that second area, the financial area. And, and what do you mean by that, Carrie? What I mean by that is I've had conversations with financial professionals who really go out of the way to talk to people about timing of things like Social Security benefits. Like, you know, if you start at the wrong time and maybe it's, it's attractive to go ahead and get it, but you're still working, then you're going to end up doing several different things. You're going to penalize what you get down the road because you're not going to be getting a full benefit. But secondly, you're going to end up paying most of that first benefit in taxes anyway. So there's all these these dimensions that you have to take into account. And if you're not a financial, uh, like a retirement expert, or you have that training, you know, you're just kind of like winging it and hoping for the best. Oh, absolutely. I just got a call this week from a lady who was, uh, her husband had passed and she was going to be going to the social security administration to see if she should take her husband's social security versus her social security. Right. And she was looking for some guidance there. And I said, do you have a financial person? You know, do you have someone that you talk to? And she did not, right. which, you know, that's, that's my first, that would have been my go-to of talk to your financial person to have them guide you uh, uh, to make the best decision for you. Um, so, of course, I had sent her over to Nancy at Helping Seniors of Brevard County <laughs> <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> for some more in, information and, and, and guidance. But absolutely, you know, that financial piece is huge. And it's, again, it's what you don't know in, in all of those little intricate pieces like the Social Security, like the spousal benefits. Um, even, and, and I just had this happen this week, too. You know, I've I've fairly aggressive in my 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 uh investments yeah because i still have a few years to go towards retirement but i've always been taught that you know once you yeah. get closer to retirement you should probably put right. things in a little bit of a safer nest egg than um when you're in 20 and right. and i just had a senior come to me her family came to me this week saying you know unfortunately she lost a whole bunch in the stock market and so they're having to relook at mm -hmm. what they're doing for right. her, um, which is just such a shame. But yeah. I know she's not the only one, you know, and, and so yeah. having a financial planner, being able to look at your things and guide you through those at different age, you know, right. what you're doing at 50 should be different than what you are doing at 75, 80. Yeah. And not only that, you know, there's also the dynamics of, um, there's also the dynamics that I've understood. There's a difference in what they call retirement planning and financial planning. Because, you know, in your early years, you know, I want my kids to be able to go to college. You know, I, I got to save for retirement, all those things. When you get to retirement age, your thinking actually shifts because you're working with assets that you've built up, not necessarily 
what your current income is. And so, for example, I've heard retirement experts uh, counsel people to actually pay back Social Security. That sounds really odd, and I'm speaking again in broad uh, generalities. But as a strategy, they'll say, like, you took this for these two years, go ahead and pay it back because then you can reapply and then you can be at the full benefit, which based on life expectancy. So there's all these nuances, but if you don't know, you don't know, exactly. right? Exactly. So let's move on to bucket number three, which is like, I want to live at home. And I think most people generally say, I love my home. I've been here all these years. I raised my kids here. This is home. This is where I want to be. Uh, I've always heard the expression, nobody says, I want to spend my last day at the office. Everybody wants to stay at home, <laughs> right? And and so, so I think for most people, uh, what you do as a uh, Seniors Helping Seniors of Brevard, Jennifer Barton, one of the things that you guys are so good at is helping make that a safe environment and making it possible for people to stay home longer. Talk about that. So statistically speaking, that's true. You, it, the numbers vary from year to year, but it's it's always – you know, pretty much over 90% right. want to age in place for as long as humanly possible. And so it's important that, that we help our seniors do that in, in a safe way, keep them as independent as possible, as safely as possible. And so that's our goal at Seniors Helping Seniors is to help them do that. Mm -hmm. And we're very honest about it. If we feel that maybe they would be better served in assisted mm -hmm. living, we'll tell them that. Or, you know, they need that next level of care, we'll, we'll right. tell them that. But, but trying to... Uh, make sure that their the necessities are covered their you know, meals transportation like i said like housekeeping medication reminders right. is the big one um making sure that we're doing that for them maybe just once a week maybe every day of the week you know depending on what they need uh, but it's a great way to be able to keep them at home where they want to be as independently as possible um, with just a little bit of care and not spending nearly as much as if you were going to assisted living straight away. Yeah, we're talking with Jennifer Barton of Seniors Helping Seniors. Good time for you to throw in your phone number if somebody has questions or they want to. So we can be reached at 321-722-2999. And we're talking about getting your ducks in a row, making that aging plan. And again, the corollary here is don't try this on your own. And one of the things that I wanted to to, to bring up, Jennifer, was because I've heard this a lot from elder law attorneys and financial planners, but I think this also applies to the experience that you guys have, too, is, you know, for most of us, when we run into these cases, like whether it's, uh, you know, the planning that we want to do about our legal paperwork or finances, we're, we're like ones and twos at this. You know, this is like a once in a lifetime. Maybe we help somebody else, so maybe it's twice in a lifetime. You guys are doing this like every single week. So this is not your first rodeo, and you really have a lot of wisdom to share with families when you sit down with them. Oh, absolutely, because we do. We do this all the time, and we know wonderful people in the senior industry. Right. You know, are helping seniors family here yeah. really helps us be able to help our clients because we know so many different elder attorneys and we, we have resources right. that, you know, like if I have a medical question, I'm not medical. If right. I have a medical question, I'm going to go and ask my friend who is a doctor right. and have him tell me, <laughs> yeah. give me the lowdown, exactly. you know, give me, the, give me the scoop. And, and that's, I think what we kind of do yeah. as, as senior industry folks is we're here to guide you. Um, because yeah. we do with this all of the time. We know all the players. We we know how this typically goes. You know, your family has its nuances, but we we know tip how these how these things kind of run their course. So we want to make sure that we give them all the correct information and, and guide them correctly. Yeah. Absolutely. I always talk about aging as on the job training because none of us are exactly sure until we get there. But you sure can make the journey easier by asking people who are actively involved and in in this world every single day and so i think that's the value so we've talked about so far we've talked about three of those uh seven seven areas of an aging plan the the legal the financial what if you want to live at home how do we do that safely but a fourth area is a lot of people say well look the kids are gone I love my home, but it's really too much to keep up with now. Let me do something different. That could be like, I want to downsize, live in a condo on the beach. It could be like, hey, I want to I want to have more socialization. So 
let's find a good uh, independent living or assisted living or wherever I am on the, and sometimes it may be that you have to take a look at things like memory care, but that's a whole area that if you wade into that, you know, in Brevard County, we have 140, or I think I've been told it's more than that now, different options just for assisted living. And, and assisted living is not what you thought it was right. 30 years ago. It has changed so much. You know, I think, unfortunately, some of us who are older have that uh, that image mm-hmm. in our head, and, and we don't want that at all. But that's not what it is anymore. No. There are some absolutely gorgeous places from very large yes. to very small. Yes. Um, we had one gentleman that we worked with that went to a very small space, um, but out in more in western Brevard County where they had a ranch and they had horses. Wow. And it was absolutely perfect perfect for him and who he was so there are so many different options to choose from yeah you know be, be please be open to it yeah and we have like some great resources in the helping seniors family like denise bergman with senior care authority and that's what they love to do they love to sit down with a family get to know the family what the needs are and then look because they're they're experts at all of those kind of like what's out there so you don't have to go drive around to 140 different locations. Exactly. You can, you can, can take help. the benefit of some wisdom from somebody who really understands and can help. And find so, the right placement. So then then we talk a lot about medical and wellness. You know, if you don't have a plan for taking care of your health, you know, you're going to wind up with whatever happens. And that may not necessarily be the best choice for you. So looking at the medical side of all this really is important in your aging plan and, and kind of a corollary, but we call it actually a separate category as we're going through these seven seven buckets or seven chapters of your aging plan, is Medicare. Because making your decision correctly about what you do with Medicare can make a difference of thousands, whether we're talking oh, about absolutely. prescriptions or what's covered and what's not covered. And that's one thing that when people ask me about Medicare, I will tell them very honestly, Medicare is complicated. I know enough about Medicare, and I've been around this for a while now, yeah. so I know a little bit about Medicare, but I know enough about Medicare to tell you I don't know anything. Right, right. And, I'm <laughs> and gonna, you need an expert. <laughs> and, and I'm going to call somebody who knows. And you know, here again, in the uh, Helping Seniors world, we, we have a network of great people who are independent Medicare agents so they're not beholden to a company they can look at your situation i'm talking about folks like vicky moore who's Vicky's in, wonderful yeah, who's independent we have uh, a gentleman jerry hadlock jr who's been doing this for like i think 13 15 20 years something like that really uh, at, or marissa mitchell who also is an expert these people they go to school they they have to learn every company's product so when you sit down with them say here's my situation they want to know what prescriptions you're taking what's your medical you know expectations who your doctor is so we can make sure whatever we're coming up with has you going to your own doctor why would you try to sift through all this junk that comes in your mailbox and vicky's even told me that she has to go to classes yeah each year absolutely she'll go back because the policies change formularies change so she'll be going back to to school basically each year to yeah. learn what what has changed what's the, what are the differences so that she can advise properly a hundred percent and so again why would you try this stuff on your own when there's so many good resources available and our last little bucket just so i get them all seven in is transportation because you know the transportation bucket sounds easy well i'll just hop in my car and go but it may may come a time that it may not be safe for you to do that or prudent for you to do that and then you got to look at what what are my options how else can i get to doctor's appointments how else can i get to the places i want i need to go shopping or, or whatever it is so again resources exist in our county but it's good to not have to run up against it that way so again um that's just as we're kind of talking about a new year's res- resolutions let's make our aging plan jennifer and get it going for 2023 Absolutely. I highly encourage you to take care of yourself because if, especially if you're a family caregiver, you know, you've got to take care of you before you can take care of other people. Well said. Jennifer Barton, Seniors Helping Seniors, phone number one more time for you. 321-722-2999. And that's the time we have for this week's edition of Helping Seniors on the Radio. We will be back next week, uh, first week of January with none other special guest, elder law attorney, board certified elder law attorney, Bill Johnson, we'll see you in the new year.